professional filmmakers. There we go. We are now filming recording. professionally. Sweet. We actually used this mic for the first time to do to talk about um, the Dahmer tapes. It sounded pretty good. I love this mic. It's it's named after my one of my favorite battle bots. Yeti. Well, it's not named after, but it's, it's got the same name. Same as name. Yeah, so that makes me. Is it Steve? Steve the bot. Steve the bot. <laughs> That's right. Steve. No, those bots have great names. Tombstone, Yeti. What were some other ones? Uh, there was a Tombstone's ridiculous battle bot that was shaped like a hamburger, so it was called Battle Royale with cheese. Oh, dude, that's where I'm. <laughs> that's where I'm. My four hundred one k is going on that one. It's like, look, this is all the money I have. I cashed in for the Cadillac. I wouldn't do him. that because that bot went like zero and six in the fight. He, <laughs> he was just, he was just he was waiting. Too, he was he waiting was, for the. He was just lay low. <laughs> He's like, yeah, trust me. Just they should it. enter the wraith in the battle bots. Yeah, they should do a. Mini, That's very unfair. Mini wraith. No, because then the whole crowd will be unfazed. Like <laughs> everyone else in the community, they'll just be like, oh. And wow. also too, like every time he gets taken out, they'll be like, okay, well we're down to three. Now two. Now two. Now, two. now, now we're back to three. three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. It'll screw up the stats for sure. It's like, so well, what is he? What is he at? It's like I don't know. Damn. All I know is he's fucking unstoppable. <laughs> Don't look so. Randy weird. Quaid will be the judge. Yeah, because like, they have judges of battle bots. Randy Quaid is like, you just, eh. you just see him flipping off pickles. And, <laughs> not impressed. We have, pickles you, we on have to. Field. We have to. We have to make a, a meme or a gif of that. Just I like, know that that movie it, is meme tastic. I, I still saw like fifty things in there. I wanted to. Don't, make. Care. Don't, don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. There was a gif I wanted to make in. I think it was the Raven, mm-hmm. or it was either the Raven or. Dragon. I think it's Dracula when he's reading everything. I wanted to gift that so when someone breaks the rules on Hollow Weekly, I could be me reading all the rules you just right, broke. Right. Because <laughs> he's like going like right. this. I told you, man, the way he reads because his creepy hands go like this. While he's and reading. he keeps the paper one inch from his eyes. Yes, yes. I'm like, dude, you have, you're have 2,000 years old and you still aren't wearing glasses. <laughs> right. What the shit? Right. And it's like literally like, I know you can't see it, but two odd decree. I know it's nitpicky, but I also never caught in the original Dracula. Oh, yeah. Let's, let me she, kick the episode okay, off. Okay, okay. This, this, this is all good shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. all good shit. Okay. This is gold. Now this is gold. Okay, so we'll kick off the episode. Hey there, boys and girls. Welcome to this week's episode of Hollow Weekly. Nick and George and... Who's that? It's me! That's Garrett in the Special flesh. We got him here. Garrett is back. So if you're listening to this, you've probably already heard the bonus episode we uploaded of us watching The Wraith. We absolutely loved it. But on top of this fantastic 24-hour trip that Garrett's made out here to L.A., we also... Went to a universal marathon. Yep. Like, and, and that was a blast. We caught, me and George caught the first, how, how many films did they show total? Seven films. They showed seven. Me and George uh, caught three of them. And we caught uh, Frankenstein, Dracula, The Raven, and then you continued with? Um, Bride of Frankenstein, Son of Frankenstein. Um, Black Cat and Murders of the yep. Rumor. Black Cat and Murders of the Rumor. That, and, and guys, if you're doing the math, this 24-hour trip, Garen has had negative seven hours of sleep. <laughs> I actually owe them sleep. <laughs> the people on the flight tonight are going to be pissed off. Like, Why is the plane being sucked in from his snoring? <laughs> you know what's worse than that? Is you know that the in-flight movies are all going to be worse <laughs> than what you got to see. You're like, how are they worse? Because I worked on them. <laughs> 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 they uh, they weren't they I tell you what though they That's they hilarious. aren't that they weren't that it was all the Oscar films um, and every time I would look over somebody's shoulder to see if they were watching Green Book I was just like like a proud parent like, <laughs> there's my kid scoring his first goal I'm so proud <laughs> but I didn't see many of them and that's okay it's um you know. Call us what you want, but just keep calling us Best Picture. <laughs> That's right. The best zing, because everyone hates us now, because we're the Best Picture winner. Yeah. My boss, the great John Brister, who's my boss on the current Blumhouse while I'm on the hunt, mm-hmm. but he was our boss on Green Book, and somebody was giving him like lip about the movie. He's like, you like baloney? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? My baloney has a first name. It's O S C A R. And I'm like, and John, if you know him, is so well spoken and so elegant. And so the only thing he was missing was backing up, going pew, pew, pew. <laughs> but he told me that, and I'm like, dude, that's cold blooded. Yeah, that's, but that's him. But that, that's, that's him. Savage. He doesn't have to, like, you know, he doesn't have to raise his voice. He no. can just zing you. And uh, I was like, God. The quiet ones are the most devastating. Well, and not just that. It's like, Snipers. you know, you, if, you're, if you're in this business long enough, you know, hopefully you'll do it right. And your boss has just become your friend. So, yep. And John is, he's a friend. That's awesome. So we went to the Egyptian theater and we saw all these films. 
and 35 millimeter. Yes. Glorious. And, 35 millimeter. And you're, you're an expert on uh, prints and like how, because you run programmings for theaters and. Yeah. Um, those, those were the, I've never seen prints cleaner than that. And everybody would be like, well, you probably didn't have a sharp eye because they were Blu-rays. I'm like, no, dude, Blu-rays don't run out. You know, yeah. Blu-rays, <laughs> Blu-rays don't have the little tracking marks at the end. Right. Blu-rays don't have, and plus two, honestly, anytime somebody gives you like shit about stuff like that, just go upstairs. You'll hear, if you have a sharp enough ear, you'll hear the bell for the ring. And plus two, man, when film, you, you want to sleep well, just listen to that projector hum. Yeah, oh, well, true. there's nothing. There was better. a few guys who did, in fact, hear it during some of the films because we sit, the guy behind us. That dude was knocked out Mid- midway through yeah. the rave, and he's here. That dude yeah. was like, I think he's still there. <laughs> he's still sleeping. <laughs> uh, there was only about probably there was probably only about thirty or forty people left for Sun. Yeah. But, but it was a good crowd. For it was forty people for at for the most, end. Yeah, yeah. For most of it no, for the crowd. when you guys got there, and I'm so glad you guys came. Um, when you got when you got there, that thing was like max cap, almost max capacity. Yeah. And everybody, it's what I love about seeing movies here. Everyone knows when to clap. Everyone knows when to yeah. cheer. Yeah. Everyone knows. We were talking because you you were about to leave when Frankenstein made his big interest, and then was that you? Yeah, okay, yeah we, we yep, saw we, you. Still I, I knew you well enough to know, like, oh, he'll stay. Mm-hmm. He'll, he knows. He knows. Mm-hmm. And so that yeah. was like the first big clap of the and, night, and, and that that's, sets the energy. Man. It does. It, it really does. And and that's the great thing about coming here too is like you still have to tell people. You, you don't. It's like they know. Yeah. They they know when to cheer the director. They know when to cheer the moment. The biggest ovation of the night, of course, is that three shot of. The Bride of Frankenstein, yeah. and then it goes to the master, and everyone with the friends walk with score, and it's everyone's like, because it's, it's such an iconic shot. Yeah, it really. I mean, that, I, that and that's the thing is, we were talking about how like Charlie Sheen didn't have a lot of actual screen time in the Wraith, but like or interest, or, or <laughs> but the Bride became an iconic horror character for like the least amount of screen time I've ever thought ever of ever. Time. She is iconic. Yeah. She's she's dubbed in every movie, everything. Yeah. And boy, I tell you, she is just. I mean, she's. I've never seen anything quite like her. Right. And honestly, I think one reason why they put those Frankenstein movies later mm-hmm. is because that's. Um, Bride is the one I've actually seen the most in 35 mil, mm-hmm. but it's the one that I'll just keep coming back for because yeah, it's sure. iconic. And I think that's one reason why everybody stayed as long as they did yeah. was because they wanted to. That was probably smarter than that. And there's lots of little details mm-hmm. in that one where in, in a lot of the other ones, like The Raven is a really fun ride and a fun movie, but it didn't feel like the director was trying to get any kind of high level messaging going on, like whatever. But James Whale is just a different level. He, he he would be making blockbusters today. Yep. He really would be. He was our he was that generation's Nolan. He was that generation's I mean Spielberg, yep. Yeah, he just didn't he was like in control. Like when you watch his pictures, you're like, that's a dude that's in control of everything. Yeah. And you guys notice this, and I know your audience has noticed it too, because there was no Panavision, there was no Cinemascope, there was no nothing. The screen, the poster, the picture is pretty much just as we refer to mm-hmm. as the you know 16.9, the postage stamp. Yep. But those sets, they're not built wide; they're built tall. Yeah. And you got your money's worth on those. They were gorgeous, yep. and he was involved. With everything. And that's amazing that that still holds up. And let me tell you something that popped into my head while I was watching it that blew my mind. I, I recently saw a, a re-release of Jurassic Park in the theaters, mm-hmm. right? And the audiences just dissolve into laughter when you get to the scene where they, they're trying to get the computers and reboot the park and mm-hmm. the computers yeah. look ludicrous. Because tech ages so fast now. So right? fast. Like if we look at the big computers they were using in Jurassic Park are ridiculous mm-hmm. now, right? But they fired up the lab, the Frankenstein's lab, with the gears and the wheels and the sparks or whatever, and the audience was just not, not a laugh to be heard no. because it still looks good. That, that, which is amazing that he was able to take tech and like that it's still across all this time, almost a hundred years, is not ridiculous. Looking. That kind of strict bad equipment. He had always said like, yeah, you know, if I knew it was going to be that iconic, I should have charged it more than ten thousand. <laughs> but yeah, seriously, right? it, it's just like that shit looked. Good. Yeah. And one thing that's great about both of the films, but really in Bride, are like just the close ups of the faces with the light shining off it, yeah. of the equipment, of the sparks. Of, man, that's just an editor that's just like boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom. And, and again, you're coming and you're working with a true master. Yeah. And I don't think. 
because he didn't, and I hate to use this term too, he didn't do any, quote, real films. Right. Like, nah, dude, that dude, that was, that was a, that that's was a real, filmmaker. I did. That's a real movie. filmmaker. So like I told Garen, I, I've told this everyone on the show before, I never actually watched through either Frankenstein or Dracula all the way through. So this was my first mm-hmm. time. And I liked Frankenstein more because I, I was told George, like he had this formula of, okay, if we're doing a wide shot and we have two people here, let's make sure the set looks fucking amazing. And then when we tighten in, you can ham it up and just act your heart out. And that was like, that was the formula. And anytime they'd cut back, I was just glamorous with the background. And then when they zoomed in, I was like, give it to me. Go ahead, sell me on this line. Totally. And then they had that line that you really liked. You said James Whale is so slick. Mm-hmm. When they, they think that he's cheating, though, he, there's another woman. It cuts to him. Just, yeah, so that, because I love that segue because James Whale was really sly, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, there's a, I know, there's a couple good segues. There's a, there's a really good segue in Dracula where, they're talking and they're like, who could be responsible for all this, oh. this horrible stuff? And then it goes, Count Dracula is this disembodied voice, but it's because they're introducing yeah. him. The it's not because room. it's not because like they right. accuse him, it's right? Like- it's, right, which is a great segue. But there's a segue in, in Frankenstein where Baron Frankenstein, who I forgot is one of the greatest characters in cinema, he's so don't great. even tell yeah. me like he's and- just amazing. But he comes, he's coming in, and he's convinced. That the reason his son is never around is because he's cheating on his fiance, right? So he's like, I don't care what any of you say, there's another woman and I'm gonna find her. And then it cuts to Colin Clive just reclined back in a chair, just smoking so, a cigarette. Yeah. Like so obvious, but I never caught it before until you see it in a big screen. That, and I was really surprised that this line didn't get an applause was when uh, Lugosi's Dracula turns around, he looks at uh, Van Helsing, is like, for a man who's only lived one lifetime, is, you're very wise. That is yeah. literally the, such a great the best not um, cliche line. Because a lot of them have become cliches, like Children mm-hmm. of the Night, Listen to Them, What Music They Make, I Never Drink Wine. Like, yep. But that one's not a cliche. Not and that is the best line he delivers in that movie that's Slowly not, not dollies in to tell him that. And, it, and it's a perfect delivery by Lugosi, too. Yeah, yeah. totally. I like. I had the opposite, real quick, I had the opposite reaction, but it was for different reasons. Because I've always liked Frankenstein better Dracula just because I, the, I, it's just not, like, I don't even think, it's almost like a not a fair comparison because I think Todd Browning was struggling with some things filming Dracula and Carl yeah. Freund directed some of Dracula. When you have a movie that's being made like that, Whereas James Whale is like a meticulous perfectionist, so like obviously. And, and right. anytime you lose your number one, right? Because that was always supposed to be Lon Chaney. Yeah, and uh, Todd Browning wanted Lon Chaney for Dragon. Yeah, and then he and he died um, two weeks before it started shooting. Yeah, exactly. So right. it's one of those where like, shit. Right. And I mean, those two had done so many movies together yep. that it was the yang to their yang. Totally. Plus, let's be honest, Frankenstein is by miles a better novel, right? So the source was the material stronger. Yeah. But. I won't, never had that. I love Dracula. It's actually my first horror movie I remember seeing, so I have like a sentimental attachment to it. But it's, it, I've never felt like it was like the highest level movie. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of people who think Spanish Dracula is a better Dracula, like right. So, but but I was really impressed with how it holds up in this viewing. Like that's I, it true. It was really entertaining. And also really, too, like, you got to factor in. You're seeing it on the big screen. Yep. You're seeing how it meant to be shot, yep. and you're seeing it with an incredible audience. Yes. They were great. They yes. were so great. They, yeah. they were they they added to everything. They, right. They always do. I mean, that's why you know that's why I fly out here for yeah. Because seriously, it's like I love my I love seeing movies in Austin. I really like watching movies in New Orleans at certain theaters. Sure. I really like <laughs> going to the Nashville to the Bell Court. But man, there's nothing that yep. nothing that tops this. Yes. But I but so back to because I want to hear about Nick's first reactions to Frankenstein Dragula, but starting with Frankenstein because the first one we saw. But the reason I even said that is because when you look at Frankenstein, the thing that really stood out to me on this viewing was Colin Clive's performance. It He's is so, so strong. He, he is. And you know, um, we were talking about it, and, and you probably know this too. You know, he was supposed to be the Invisible Man. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, tragedy strikes. But he was really a tortured soul. Yeah. Like, you had to get him. And the actor who plays him in Gods and Monsters mm-hmm. really nailed, like... But James Whale, he he coddled him. He, yeah, he he's like, look, no, 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 you're my guy. Yeah, and we talked. He about, reminds me of Dana Andrews a little bit, like I kind of a ruinedish actor who, like, you know, I, I can to, see that. And while Todd Browning lost his number one, mm-hmm. James Whale never lost his. Right, true. And yeah. so he's already kind of working on House Money. He's like, well, I'm totally. like you. I have my guy, <laughs> <laughs> and I and I found this guy in the in the. Um, 
I found this guy in the commissary, and I think he's going to be great. And that's how I found Karloff. He has that yep. unique face. And I, I, we were, I was talking to the gentleman in front of us, the guy from Marvel, mm-hmm. and we were talking about like the progression of the Karloff character and how we like... Um, our favorite look was the son of Frankenstein mm-hmm. with the lambskin, but still got the blazer because you know it gets cold at night. Um, but how he had put on like how his face gets bigger and bigger because he's older. Yeah. You know he yeah. he uh, he finally hit it when right. he was forty three. Right, and then like look, dude, I haven't eaten for thirty one years. I'm going to do that shit. <laughs> and his face gets a little fuller and fuller sure, in this sure. movie. But it's like, guys, cut him some slack. That's a good point. He's 83 years old. <laughs> Didn't but, Karloff have the guacamole recipe that we posted it? before? It's like Karloff's guacamole. Yes. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and he'd, uh, of course, you know, because he has no dialogue in the original one, so he could pull that bridge out and make yep. his face even look crazier skinny. Totally. Um, in the second one, he had dialogue, so he had to put it back in, so that's gone. Yep. But for, for his son, <coughs> excuse me, for his son... Because he had so little dialogue in it, he mm-hmm. popped it back out. But, dude, man, when your face is that full, it doesn't matter <laughs> if you have the devil in the hunt. But good for him. Yeah. For, and him. you're right. Seeing it on the screen in that quality print and that large, just that. You can really high. see that cut. In yeah, his and that silhouette. That's how Jesus thin he was. Christ. And um, his on one of the DVD special features and stuff, they talked about, like, he had to have, like, three back surgeries after that movie. That's crazy. Yeah, because, like, I mean, you pat him up to make him look bigger than he is yeah. the biggest I've ever saw him was like they really padded him up in Tower London yeah and um, but that wasn't him I mean he was right. a frail elegant sure actter but right. he's like I can act big but man people really pay a price for making movies a lot of people back who don't work then, out and don't, don't know <laughs> yeah back, back then you know it's like because he had to physically carry mm-hmm. you know a, a I won't say I won't say drunken but sure an inebriated Colin Clive mm-hmm. up those stairs he mm-hmm. had to yeah, for a little guy. Yeah, yeah. He's, it's his first real role. He's not going to complain. Right. But well, a lot of them were poor Baron Frankenstein had to go up like a thousand steps in that one scene. Yeah, yeah. I guarantee he was like, I'm doing this once. That's so it. you better not. You better. My pipe better be ready. <laughs> but <laughs> Frankenstein is so full of life and characters. That's one of the things that you forget about it until you revisit it. Is There was the the, the wedding scene actually reminded me of the opening of The Godfather. I can see it was that. so vast. There were so many people, so much dancing, so much music. Have you guys um, have you guys had a chance to watch any of the... And they released this really nice set a couple years ago, thanks to TCM, hmm. our plug. Um hmm. <laughs> These these Karloff films before he was the quote unquote star. Yes, and man, there's some like, you know, they always made him in a silent film because he's got that incredible face. Yep. You can have him do anything, yep. but he was always uh, he was always a heavy. Gangster. He was yep. always a gangster. But yep. boy, I really like those films. I do too. They're do really too. entertaining. He was a trivia question, and we'll plug our our horror trivia group on Facebook. We have the largest trivia group on Facebook actually for a horror theme. And not, it's, bragging. It not bragging. Not bragging. But not, bragging. <laughs> not bragging. Check out the silhouette of our group. <laughs> yeah. So, but but he, he was the question was what what actor made like three hundred change movies before they had their break, and it was him yeah. because I mean it was insane how many movies that. Well, in the silent films too, you could end up. God, you could work on a dozen of those yep. it's like you're like you're like a stuntman now <laughs> right right how many right. movies you do this week 38 <laughs> right and landis would told us a story when we were uh working with him that he had done he went to bulgaria and worked on a hundred movies in like three years and they're like that's absolutely bullshit i was like no it's not it's a different world you yeah. go over there and you're gonna do okay uh you're gonna report to this set to do these stunts don't forget your fake beard tomorrow i need you on this <laughs> I mean, literally, you're going to do all that stuff. That's and amazing. It was just it was a different time back then. So what was your impression of Frankenstein at first? So Nick's a video editor. I, he's seen every horror movie ever made, but he's never seen almost any movie from start to finish because that's not how you watch movies. No. So you <laughs> sat and you watched Frankenstein for the first time. The way I, it probably should be viewed. The way it should be viewed. <laughs> I love how they intended it to <laughs> be. Intended. All the cuts... And yeah. Frankenstein, first of all, just on, on an editing level, yeah. are so good. Yes, it is so good. Like the, even like the inserts they do when Frankenstein comes to the door, they close. They do like two extra yep. close-ups boop, on him. Boop, boop. Oh my god! Yeah. It just adds so, and it's a silent scene. And there, yeah, because there's like this portrait will paint itself. There's yes. no reason, yeah. you know. Even like the introduce uh, the introductions to the lesser characters. Uh, a lot of times you'll go from the master to the close-ups. Yeah. They reversed it. Yes. It was close up, close up, close up, close up, meet in the middle master. Oh, interesting. And it's just, it's one of those touches. It's like, dude, this is watching 
And I hate people that hate old movies. Sure. Oh man, this is it's black and white. These guys, yeah. say, they didn't. Uh, it's bad sound. It's like, no, dude, you're watching a fucking masterpiece. Yeah. Just shut up and learn. What something. I liked about it was the difference. I don't. I, I, I'm not. I'm not a camera guy by any right. means, but. How, like I was saying, like the beautiful wide shots, but then when they did their inserts, it looked they had like this huge depth of field behind them, so mm-hmm. it was like you have nowhere else to look but these guys uh, giving you the lines. My favorite character out of everyone in Frankenstein, and I thought this was probably the most interesting thing that I saw of any character, uh, was Baron Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Whenever he's around other people, he's always mumbling and like all this other shit. Yeah. But when it came to the celebration, like the high society shit, he was sharp as attack. Yeah. He was like, oh, let's make sure you have plenty of wine. Let's come over here. And yeah. just seeing his like character. Like the ultimate host. Like, yeah. yeah. He, he was... just he just, he just just switched. But he also just... cynical and grumpy as hell. So yeah. he had both both things. Yeah. yeah. When, when, the, when the fancy wedding stuff was going on, he was grumpy. He's like, I don't give a shit. But when he could, yeah. when he could be in the public's eye and look good, he was all of a sudden like, I'm... Beer for everyone. Beer for everyone. Beer for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of the things that we were talking about coming home was the fact that like the a movie that's almost 100 years old that the fact that this holds up this well I turned Nick halfway through Frankenstein and I was like I miss Fritz <laughs> Fritz was a I, savage I, Fritz, Fritz was an amazing <laughs> character and I forgot how soon he leaves us in the movie yeah he doesn't right? last long no he doesn't last long but man is he making a break Dwight, Dwight Fry was he was in all of the James Whale films yep. and he was such a great character he's amazing and you talk about somebody um and I can see why Todd Browning would steal him for his Rumsfeld. Totally. For, his, uh, for Enfield, yeah. Yeah, and he just, he had, you know, that amazing face too. Yeah, and it, he was like, he was literally, you know, that's one of the things I really love about a great horror film is everybody thinks like, if if you think about, if you went to, if you just ask as a question, like, what's scary about Nightmare on Elm Street? Everyone's going to be like, Freddy. Yeah, and Freddy yeah. visits you in Nightmare, like, whatever, right? And then if you, if you like, what's scary about Dracula at, at the time, even though those still movies can still impact me, right? But, like, what's scary about Dracula should be Dracula. But the scene where Renfield crawls up on the, That's the, the woman that mm-hmm. was, like, knocked out, and he's scary as hell. Yeah. Like, he's legitimately... And, and, the, and, the, and Dracula's daughters, too. Yes, totally. When they're getting ready to feed off him, he's like, nope. Yep. That's mine. Go get your own. Yep. <laughs> but I mean, when you have subsidiary characters that are also frightening, that's a great, a great addition. Yeah, because I mean, it's just like more toppings on the pizza. Yeah, I'm just gonna make <laughs> it. You mentioned a little bit right before we watched the wraith. We were talking about the the camera movements. Yes. Oh my god! Like it's funny because whenever. Because like whenever you think of most of those old films, you imagine they just put it on sticks. Yep. They roll they... like the Raven. There was almost no camera movement in that movie. Exactly, but with Frankenstein, they're like, we're gonna move this bitch all Ooh. over the place. Yep. And it is like, like even like when they went from the laboratory or laboratory, however, laboratory. however you want to say, it. very fancy. We'll go laboratory. Yes, um, when they went from the laboratory over to like even just the hallway. And it, like, it felt like I was at a Disneyland attraction. It looked like I was in Cinderella's Castle or some shit yeah. like that. And I bought the set. I, I think sometimes those camera movies are just to show, like, yeah, we built the whole thing. Right? Yeah. Compared yeah. to, like, those dolly shots where it's, like, you in Frankenstein's Castle. It's like, and we're going to pan over for this room just to show you that we built it. And we're going to pan <laughs> over to that one. Yeah. It's like, no reason. Just. And there's this amazing, it's actually one of the most effective moments in Shakespeare. And it's a shame because it's a play that's not performed that often. But there's a play called Love's Labor's Lost. And all these couples are trying to basically hook up, right? Mm-hmm. And, and there's a huge party, big elegant party, and everyone's dancing, whatever. And then this guy in black just walks through and parts the whole crowd and shows up and announces that the most important person in the city is dead. And it's like the messenger of death just shows up. And you just feel like the chill, the temperature in the room comes down. And the guy walking with his oh, dead yeah. daughter in Frankenstein yeah. through the party and just watching people... And it was even the extras did a great job acting where they were partying, and then you just saw them realize all those extras did so good. Right, like I, that scene is so I, powerful. I was talking to one of our young ads about Metropolis, mm-hmm. and and you know it's it's easy to get people to you know left, right, left, right on the cadence and stuff like that. I get that, but um, what I had told him more than anything though, what pressed me about movies and films of that is like you can pick out a background artist and see an amazing performance. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, good God, we can't even get them to stand in a line. <laughs> stop following the camera, stop following the camera, stop following Don't leave why, the camera. Why is, he, why is he following the camera? Oh, his, his eye line caught it. I'm like, no, he's literally following the camera that's on a dolly. I'm like, oh, I don't know what to say about that. I got, I've I got, seen I got, so many modern movies where there's people in the background who are clearly like... 
just sneaking a yeah. look. Like, <laughs> it's ridiculous. My, my, my friend, I, and I love to just... Uh, He's like my little brother mm-hmm. of film, and I love to bust his chops whenever I can. And he'll just ask questions to ask them. Hey, uh, what uh, what what lens are we shooting on on, on the scene down there? <laughs> and I'll just be like, we're on a six hundred and twenty five millimeter lens. <laughs> and he's like, Karen, that they're not shooting on the lens from Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like. You got me. <laughs> I like to intercept the signal and just do that. To... I did during the uh, that big celebration because uh, I was we, we were talking. Uh, I've been watching more mystery science theater, mm-hmm. and there's a part where they go. The guys were like slapping their hands and legs, but they hang on that shot for like a minute. Yeah. And in my head, I saw the guys from uh, MST3K go slap, 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 the, the one of the complaints that bothers me as a horror fan is listening to people talk about how old movies aren't scary anymore. And the the funny thing is, all these people who who say this, I can't wait for time to catch up to them because it's already happening to Halloween seventy eight and Jaws and yeah. like whatever that just don't scare audiences that are like 20, 25 years old, right? So the movies that you think are scary, like the the, the like the Evil Dead fans who walk around like Dracula is not scary. Hey, it's coming for your movie. The time is going to change and your movie is going to get the mm-hmm. same thing. You have to open up your mind and imagination to like be scared. Just just watch the movie like a person should yeah. watch a movie, right? But. One of the things that really struck me on this rewatch was, I think Dracula is a little bit more scary a movie as a concept, just even to this day, right? Even though I know Frank scarier Spence images too, scarier images and more iconic images. But but one thing that I didn't re- uh, that I always realized when I rewatch Frankenstein is how terrifying. First of all, human beings are the mob, right? And yeah. the way people act, and all the shots of the mob was scary. Like mm-hmm. if those people were outside, I'd be like, fuck. And then. The end is so brutal. Yep. Right? Like, literally, and Frankenstein is terrified, burning alive. Frankenstein monster is terrified, burning alive, pinned under one of the pillars in the yep. in the windmill. We just cut away, and then there's a party. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, like, fuck they, him. You like, know, they, it was just like later on in the Universal movies how everything had to end on an explosion. Yes. But that law that came in to where, like, all your monsters had to be dead by the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. And it always seemed like they had to send them out on a happy note, which is fine. Right, like, right. Universal was, you know, they were made for the general audiences. Sure. That was a G movie that we saw last sure, night. Sure, absolutely. But boy, I'll tell you, it's some of the some of them, like when we saw Dracula, and you don't you don't see it, but you hear him like, oh, as he's getting staked. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. Hello, friend. Are you okay over here? <laughs> and right. then like, oh, okay, well, I guess that's it. Right, right. But, but Frank inside the same way. I love but it. But it's really jarring that it's that brutal an ending. And I think that's still effective to this day. If you actually thought about what you just witnessed, which was a, someone who didn't ask to be brought into creation, sewn together, given a, a defective brain by accident by an Abbey by normal. Fritz, an Abbey an normal, Abbey normal, normal brain. The whole time, you, you, you guys, you have to admit, as soon as it said that, you knew somebody was going to say something, yes. or they were like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah." <laughs> and, and that jar theft scene was great, by the way, when he's stealing the brains yep. and you're like, "Oh my god!" That's I'll great. say. So I know a lot of people think the scary part is that he didn't want to be created the mom and all this yeah, stuff, yeah. but I genuinely think the part where he's loose in the castle is pretty goddamn funny. Yes. Can you imagine like in this house right now of a maniac yes. who could just tore our totally. And the reason it was scary for me is I had a little brother who I used to be able to beat up on. <laughs> then he hit puberty and got like mad strong and so like I kind of yes. I kind of know what they were going through. So, yeah. I piss him off and run from the house. When yes. he when you saw him did he back in and then turn around? Every time. But I snake it. <laughs> But it's actually, um, it's actually that the the fact that that Frankenstein locks his fiance away and he's chasing the monster through the castle, and the fact that this genius man of science can't fucking locate a monster in his own house, and he and he ends up in all the wrong places while the monster is killing the one thing he really cares about in the house, just shows you how smart, stupid. That his his character actually is, and I think that's on purpose. I think it's the it's, the it's it's the mark of a criminal. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Just um, divide and conquer because he's like, oh, that's well, such a good point. It is. It's it, seriously. It's like you know, I'll make a sound here. Sound travels. You'll go upstairs. I'll go downstairs. Oh, and get what I want. Oh 
shit. And literally wow. in through the back door. That's so good. Yeah, you're I right. It's the right mind of a criminal. Yeah, it's oh, just because so he's still, good. you know, he's still thinking like how he is. Yeah. That damn. Ab- that I'll ab- be damned. Abby Normal was sentenced to like three life sentences. <laughs> <laughs> Even the scene where he, the famous scene where he throws Maria in the water and drowns her, like when he's stumbling away, I forgot that he looks at his own hands, mm-hmm. like they betrayed him, yeah. like like he like he's not even fully in control, which is still a terrifying idea. You have this long yeah. monster who's not even in control of their own actions. Doesn't even know his own strength either. Right. Oh, amazing. Such a, such a great great film. Can we can we just briefly can we talk about the Raven for a minute? Dude, we talk, so before you got here, we got to shoot the shit about the Raven. I <laughs> love that movie oh, yeah. so much. I love how hammy it was. Yes, like even totally. for Bella from the very beginning, reading some of that dialogue. Yes, just reading the Raven. Or That's whatever such a called. great shot too. And, and you guys, um, I'm really because I told you I'd never seen that film before yes. ever. So I'm really glad that that was the one. That you guys, the last one you stayed yeah, for, yeah. because that's a movie you watch your first time with friends. Yes, totally. And yeah. that crowd, yeah, they just let Bella go on that. And then it was like, because I always consider the Black Cat the 180 of the Raven. Yep. Where like the roles are over. Yep. And Bella and Boris in that one are straight and yes. disciplined. And yes. there, there is no... Well, Black Cat is an amazing film mm-hmm. with amazing <laughs> subtext and just like a really so like, well made, incredible. And movie. that opening, I just love that. Yep. Where because uh, there was only I think it was the Mummy, and I and I may be wrong, but it was the only there was only two Universal movies ever that did that kind of opening. Yep. And I just I think and besides the fact that it is just a wonderful film. Yes. It's a really good like. Um, I, I don't know. I think it's a really good horror film. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, man, that sucker. There's two black cats. Mm-hmm. There are. I saw the other one last week for Sven Gulli. Yes. And let's just make sure we reiterate which is which. <laughs> right, right, right. Because right, exactly. one of them you're really going to be impressed with. And the other one you're like, <laughs> this says 61 minutes, but it feels like 681 days. Yeah. <laughs> I well, did, the I good did. black cat is yeah. like, it actually reminds me a little bit of Dr. Fives because... There's this these there's a couple of unique movies that sit in the horror field and like just the set design of the black cat is completely unique. Nothing's ever been done like that before or since. Right? It's just like a super rare like whatever thing. But the Raven, I swear to God, half that movie is shots of the guy strapped to the table with the pendulum coming down. Yeah. I felt like I saw that 120 with times. The, with the same ADR. <laughs> <laughs> it's like maybe maybe try yelling in the air. <laughs> But it's so fun. I forgot how fun that movie is. It, it really it really is a lot of fun. And the only thing that the the Lugosi because you know he's in both black cats. Yes. Yeah. And it's got the great Basil Rathbone. So you'll automatically the greatest kind of, name ever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he got a nice ovation when Sun came around last That's night. Cool. Especially the reveals always get a nice ovation. Mm-hmm. But the thing they got the biggest one was when he takes the torch. Yep. And it says Makers of Man. And I was like, ah! <laughs> amazing. Absolutely amazing. But but The Raven, I mean, is not meant to be scary. It's really, it's not it's meant to be whatever. It's such a fun movie. Is it, but it had a really interesting, like, this message about how Bela Lugosi is inflicting pain on others to get the pain out of himself. Mm-hmm. Was kind of interesting. It was an interesting interpretation of Poe. Yeah. You know, right? In and of itself. So, and I love that they had that going on. And then they had the torture devices. I was a little disappointed in, they kept talking about he was like, I recreated all these torture devices. There's basically two. Mm-hmm. One is the trash compactor from Star Wars, yeah. and the other yeah. is the pendulum. So I, like, I would have liked to see some more. We may know. see this one again. <laughs> <laughs> we might see, this one see the little, you know, the little inquisitive eye from a new hope popping like. Yep, yeah. but I freaking loved the drugged couple. That they ended on. Oh and my they god! Slept they through the whole great. movie. They were amazing. They're like, I don't know what you're talking about. I feel pretty good. This morning. <laughs> Something happened last right? night. Right. And the party right. scene in Bella Lugosi's mansion, where they had the cool horse track thing that I would put in my house to this day. Yeah, like, that I was would, pretty cool. I would have that. That was just. It was just a blast. That movie is, is like. When you because there's the fun horror movies where you're like oh you know what I just want to watch Tucker and Dale or something mm-hmm. and then there's the scary horror movies the Raven is the fun category of a movie it right? was really enjoyable yeah. and I even liked uh, Karloff's makeup where he just droops the eye like down yeah. to his cheek because yeah. I'd seen that because that was my first time watching the Raven and I'd always seen that image of him and when you see it you know the eye looks painted on yeah totally. but in the movie like. 
doesn't bother you. You're like, that's his face. Yeah, that's his face. He's gonna live with it. You gotta do these chores. Let's Deal go. with it. Deal with it. And how much did Lugosi like torturing Karloff? I know. I feel like that's real. <laughs> well, and it's their careers art. You know, it was. Um, I think the last movie they did together was The Body Snatchers, and Bella was in a bad place at that time. Yes. And it was Boris that was there to comfort him and to help him get through that role. Yeah. So I, I think all that stuff's kind of blown out about like how much they didn't. Sure. But um, you know, I think the one thing that helped also hurt his career because after he turned down Frankenstein, which he was right to do because it was a different script. Yep. You know, man, when you take every role offered to you. Yep. You know, that, that great Bruce Willis thing is like, do you ever, you know, read the script? You get <laughs> right? <laughs> it's the truth. But, right. you know, sometimes too much exposure is just as a bad thing as yeah, not enough. That's very true. That's, yeah, well, you're right. And I think that that was, when you look at kind of, I mean, they made such a great pairing that you just you just cherish any time they got to do it. Yeah. Just, oh, my God. Yeah. It was so good together. It's and, and, it, and it's, and, and you know, people, it, unlike any profession, you know, people get, you know, it's like, man, he really, like, um, Lugosi's character of Igor and Son mm -hmm. just dominates yes. that film. Totally. And people remember that. Mm -hmm. And then that's like when they did, uh, not, um, at the time it was called Friday the 13th, but now it's called Black Friday. Um, when they did their next movie together, mm -hmm. it was like, Bella was like literally pushed to the side on that one. Yeah, wow. Because, I mean, people... Actors can get bitter and petty too. Yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, sure. I don't, I don't remember you. You know, you show yeah. me. it's like, but man, I love the fact that Igor was only supposed to be in the movie for a little bit. Yeah, but he was just <laughs> killing it. And they were just like, so, we got it. This guy, he's got to be in the movie more. Right. So he ended up being in almost the damn near film. That's and, so and for the next one too, Ghost of Frankenstein, because uh, Karloff had left, mm -hmm. and that was when uh, Lon Chaney was playing him. Lagosi is the star, and yeah. of course, the big reveal at the end. Right. And a lot of people forget, too, uh, when they do the hand mimic mm -hmm. for Frankenstein, mm -hmm. it was Lugosi's Frankenstein that did that. Yeah. That it, wasn't, it wasn't the Karloff one. It wasn't the Lon Chaney one. It right. was the Lugosi one. And that's another thing was I was – even the details on a big screen you catch, like I have never – I've seen Frankenstein. I must have seen Frankenstein 20 times at this point. But I've never caught just how, like, oh, gross the, the scar on yeah, the skin on the wrist and where he's put together. Like, that was really good. Well, on, and on Bride, too – and. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, uh, if you guys, for that, like, you see, like, the singed hair and yeah, everything like yeah. that. And as the movie goes on, he's starting to regenerate. Mm -hmm. Man, and it's not like movies are shot in order. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that was that was spot on. Yeah. Just that kind of detail. But you're right, man. He's pretty slimy, and he's pretty... <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny, because it was, it was black and white, but I could have sworn... Like a handful of scenes, my eyes were fucking with me. Like I could have, I, I swear to God, a few of the frames, I'm like Frankenstein looks bluish. Like I started, like I started to like project colors right. onto the screen. Yep. And I don't know if it was a 35 millimeter, but it was just, it was like this, like it was like an acid trip or some shit like that. Like, but it was great. I was like, I'm gonna happen an acid trip, but I'm watching Frankenstein. Like, how great is this? The 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 guys, uh, the guy and his son that was sitting in front of us, his son was starting to get really tired. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, dude, remember. A, it's seven movies, yeah. and B, it's seven black and white movies. Right. Your eye gets really comfortable, sure, yeah. and it starts to really, you start to almost focus harder, yeah, because the color is taken out, and you're just like the Happy Meter the Raven. I was like, whoa, this is good because that got like a little like, yeah. like relaxed, like like a hypnosis or something like that. Yeah, it's just it's calming. Um, the theater, the Britannia, the where we do the programming for the classic series. I always joke, but there's nothing better than waking up on Sunday morning to a beautiful black and white film. Agreed. But once in a while, we'll throw people off with this new color thing. <laughs> well, it's like, I don't know how this one's going to stick around. I'll never forget when we programmed uh, our first AIP movie. And me and Eric, my boss and my friend, were like, man, Mr. Rene is rolling in his grave. Like, what have you morons done to my series? Really? Right. Beach Blanket Bingo in the classic series. Were all the films in like the 4 by 3 like yeah. square format? Yeah. Gotcha. Yep, they, they didn't have to adjust the curtains at all. And we, we have to do that because uh, some shows will get, you know, when you get gone with the wind or you'll... There, but I always like, and I've always told them, and, and like they need to be told, they're professionals. They've been doing, the Bernays have been running the, that place for 100 years. But I always like it when you do that in front of them. So they'll be like, they're making that asserted yeah. effort to make sure that we know that Lawrence of Arabia, Ben-Hur, is going to look the best it can look. 
Mm-hmm. Whether you whether you whether you're enclosing it or you're opening it up, you're going to see this film how it's meant to be seen. So, question: If if the listeners are they want to do a universal marathon and it's not these movies, like what four or five movies would you put together that are for needed? essentials? Yeah, well, for whatever, for like you think go together really well, complement each other. Oh right? man, you could just. God, you could just show them every Invisible Frankenstein Man, one. <laughs> Seriously, that that's like the only saga that I think is worth a shit in that. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Invisible Man. I right, love right. I love Creature. I love the Well, there's Man. no good Invisible Man with the first one, right? Correct. Right. Um, but if you look at all the Frankenstein movies, mm-hmm. those all have merit and they all have recurring characters from other movies. Yeah. Whether it is Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, whether it is House of Dracula, whether it is House of uh, Frankenstein, whether it is... Because those characters all show up at some point. The other ones are really just... really about Frankenstein like a franchise. Yeah, like, he was know? He was the first. He was essentially... My, my buddy Tommy, he said that that was the first Friday the 13th. Right. Because you had episodic. You had... Also, who's in this one? Well, of course, the monster's going to be in there, but sure. this one will also have Dracula, it'll have the Hunchback, it'll have yeah. all those, and it's the only one, um, and I got it from my niece for her birthday, it's the only one that I would buy the entire set for, uh, because those movies all matter, because they, they um, you know, if I use the comic t- term, they secret wars into other comics. Sure, yeah. Um, and I think that that's really important. The other one's like, oh, all right, Dracula's daughter, okay. Right. Yeah. It's in focus the whole time. Great. <laughs> That's awesome. But the other ones, though, the other ones do matter. Like, Bride is just as important as Son is just as important. I'm not a huge fan of Ghost of Frankenstein, but I really... But it's important because it bleeds into Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Yes. You have to see Frankenstein meets the Wolfman to understand what happened in um, House Frankenstein. Right. Yeah. You have to... So, those... What's chronologically the last Frankenstein? Film. What would be the last one in the set? If you want to get technical, mm-hmm. you could say it's um, Abbott Costello meet Frankenstein. Okay, that's what I thought. But right. a lot of people would be like, oh, it's going to be House Frankenstein. Right. But I really consider Abbott Costello as the last. Okay. And I know they spawned off to do other ones. Sure. I, don't, I don't count those. Right. I, don't, I don't count him meeting the Invisible Man. And There's one... And that's the Abbott Costello meet Frankenstein. Right. That's the end of the Universal Horror. Which is a Universal. Great movie. I'm sorry, Universal Monster. Universal yes. Horror. You know, you could do a whole podcast on Tower of London, the right. Night Key, uh, Black Friday. Totally. And and I try to let people know. It's like, look, make sure you know both because you're going to be missing some incredible films. Sure. These these the, all these Karloff Lugosi other films mm-hmm. weren't always Universal Horror. Right. You're gonna. You should. And I encourage all of our listeners to find them. Yeah. Because they're always on Spinguli. They're always... And boy, there's some good ones. On on YouTube, I have like... I kid you not, I have like 25 mm-hmm. for Watch Later sure. that are all from that. That's amazing. Whether it's the uh, Sherlock Holmes series with Basil Rathbone. Yeah. Whether it's the, um, whether it's the uh, Lugosi ones before... Sure. But man, there's some good ones. There's Is some how really good ones. Basketball's universal? Yeah. That's such a good one. That's great. Did you see that thing I posted last night where I essentially just had a dream of the universal world spinning around in my head the whole time? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seriously, it's like, this is this has been my whole life. <laughs> That's what I like about how... Universal how International. How those like, films the theme ended. is in my head. Get it out. <laughs> they ha- like, when, whenever they roll that card where it's like yeah. the end... like there's It's, it's a universal picture. It feels... You feel like... You, like me and George talk about this it's like what Paramount used to be able to have like when you watch movies like The Addams Family like Mission Impossible mm-hmm. like the Paramount thing comes up you're like oh fuck like right. they put a lot of effort into this yep. it's like that with Universal it feels like the ending of like this yep. stage play mm-hmm. and you're like wow thank you for like, coming exactly yeah. like Nintendo used yeah. to do that you beat a Nintendo game at the end all the characters are holding up signs saying thank you for oh, playing cool. and it felt just like that I've like, never beat Nintendo games like that. Well, when you do <laughs> when, when I do, you do that's what I would see <laughs> it, just, it, just, it just made the end of every film like you just finished a book or something like you just you never like, shows never shows the crew always shows a good either it's a good cast is worth repeating yep. or just the players yep and then that's it and then you get that little logo that's and so good but but that's, that's all you need point, that's right? all you and it, everyone just automatically assumes that everything gets better right they're like oh movies they used to do this stupid shit or whatever but like I, when they roll, when Dracula started, and that iconic, like the the the, the, oh, the, the first show with the credits and the music, the swan and, then that, and yeah, and then that image, right? Like with that, the it, it, I'm looking at that towering image, and I'm like, no beginning of a movie gives me chills like that in the modern time. And like, it, it was better then than now. And it's a perfect combination too, because 
man, Swan Lake really gets you into the mood for what you're saying. And as we found out, Swan Lake was the opening for many Universal movies. Yes, yes. Um, and I know you guys probably caught this, but um, one thing I love, besides Ed Wood being my all-time favorite film, mm-hmm. is the fact that they, anytime uh, Martin Landau's Lugosi character has a real touching moment, mm-hmm. what do you hear in the background? Swan Lake. That's amazing. I just it's so And good. The, the thing with Johnny Depp's Ed Wood, whenever he's having a touching moment, what's the music in the background? Glenn or Glenda? Right. Just those nice touches they for people who, yeah, for people who like, man, I really love these movies and they really mean a lot to me. Yeah, and I mean, I know they mean a lot to me. Sure, my mind's still blown from the Frankenstein mind of a criminal just criminalizing the <laughs> house. Like that's such a good, t- and it was it went right over my head. Well, right? I mean, that's that's why you you know that's why you talk about it afterwards. Yeah. Like I said, that's one thing I love about coming to your guys' city is like you're not only going to meet a lot of really cool film people, but you're more than likely you're going to talk to them afterwards too. Yep. That was all right. So let me ask you this: Gun to your head, movie marathon, Universal horror or Hammer? What do you go oh, with? Universal! Universal. Universal. Yeah. Universal. Yeah. Trust me, you go to my place, you'd be like, "Oh yeah." yeah. <laughs> but well, that's not even a question said, because that, Hammer was really. I mean, Hammer's an amazing phenomenon and a really good studio, or whatever. But like, they came after. <laughs> and, <laughs> like, and also, too, I'll be honest with you. Um, I saw my very first Hammer film ever at Terror Tuesday last year. Mm-hmm. Which and, one? Right. Um, I think it was... Uh, was it Horror Dragon? No, I think it was Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not the hugest... And, and just because... I, I'm not a fan... Be, I'm just not a fan because I don't know that much about of them. Of course. Yeah, but right. I do know of them, and I know how important they really are. Right. But Joe got us an incredible print, and I was like, man, this is something I'd like to check out later. Yeah. But just not today. <laughs> yeah, not, it, Hammer didn't have the, the depth. And it, you know, it, they had like, talent, but it, you, you, James boy, Whale did, was better than any single person who... Absolutely, but boy, pretty. did they have the talent. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like, those dudes were incredible. I will say the biggest thing that I did notice from the three films that we caught was going from because I didn't catch who caught who directed The Raven it, it was a name I didn't recognize but going from James Whale to <laughs> not right, James right, Whale right. that was the biggest That's thing you, could, job, you right. could tell like, just, but then back to Dracula you're still in good hands I mean, Tom Rennick's an amazing director mm-hmm. so. yeah so however they, they program that like a roller coaster like okay here's the big kill <laughs> now we're not here with The Raven we're back up with Dracula exactly I thought it was fantastic. Well, and, and and like we were saying, because the Raven was meant to be fun and hammy, it's a whole different like that. You get a different director to do that. You can't ask James Whale to do that. Yeah, right? and, and <laughs> if you ask him to get that kind of humor, you get like what you got in Bride of Frankenstein, camp. Right. But yeah. there's 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 goofiness, and then there's camp, and then there's but boy, those characters in Bride of Frankenstein are so memorable. Yes. Every one of them. Every and one. of course, the picture I posted, my guy Lionel Atwell, yeah, yeah. only saw him once the whole night, and I was That's like. Damn it! <laughs> the world needs more line out well. Right. But I felt vindicated in mentioning all those other Universal movies because you're going to get your Phil Lina Atwell in those. Yeah. So don't worry, folks. If you miss him on those yeah, five films, you'll sure. you'll make up for more. Than- I'm excited. I want to marathon those uh, heading into October and then do another episode. So. Yeah. You going to be around in October? My yeah, I'm here. Well. Oh, the guys told me last night. They're like, Dude, you you gotta come back in October. I'm like, I'll I'll try. It's just Tarantino's you know, theater. You look at that lineup. Yeah. Oh my god, it'll knock your socks. Monster only, Squad. I've only, um, of course, you know, living where I live at, you're a you're an observer from far. Mm-hmm. But I still get my new Bev calendar, even though that I don't live in your state. <laughs> sure. I still get them. I brought like 50 of them back. I'm like, <laughs> don't mind me. Just gonna take a few of these back home. But <laughs> Phil was awesome. Phil was Phil was cool with it. And, uh, <laughs> It was great because like Phil Blankenship had come and he he'd done a lot of stuff at the draft house with Zach Carlson. But it was nice to actually sit there and talk to him and like, hey bro, you're you're everything that's right with the movies. Thank you so much. And he he liked my stunts unlimited stuff and <laughs> I'll try and when I come back in, I'll bring you guys some swag back too. Um sweet. But he was uh it was great, and he he was a, a pure gentleman, and it was nice, like, because you meet all these horror friends, yeah, and it's nice to finally actually, you know, shake hands and be like, hey, brother, you know. For sure. What I like about the, I swear, I, I told George on the way back, whenever you go to those conventions, you always see, like, faces you've seen in some other films. Mm-hmm. I'm fairly certain I saw someone, I, there's like, there was an actor who I couldn't name, but I'm like... Texas Chainsaw remake? Like, I, I saw someone there from one of the films, and it's like, just like, even waiting in line for the bathroom, uh, which is funny because it's like a horror convention is probably one of the only places where the dudes have this long ass line for the, yes, for the, for the bathrooms. Um, but I was observing like everyone there, and like, you just felt like this sense 
of this like weird community where like mm-hmm. everyone like no one else is going to be there is spending the day right. at the Egyptian theater for a horror movie marathon. So mm-hmm. like I don't know, it's just this weird or flying from New Orleans on a 24 fucking, hour break. Right, ready to head back. <laughs> and head, weird head back community would have a good name for the podcast. <laughs> well, yeah, weird community would be great. But it, but it was I don't know. It had this like cool sense of camaraderie of like. We're all like into like want to experience these movies together and applaud when the cool shit comes up and mm-hmm. just the energy of that. I think there's no other way I could have watched. There's no better way I could have watched Frankenstein or Dragon for the first and the Raven <laughs> but, yes, yes, for the yeah. first time because that crowd was fire. Yeah, yeah. And, and and it's it's one of those things where I thought the event was in April and I just dumb lucked on that. I was like, oh, I should you know it's March now, so they'll have the date for it. I'm like, oh shit, it's this weekend, right? And so my friend uh, Emily, she's like, "Oh, I was like, what are you on about?" So my phone makes, I'm like, "Rolling." But I'm silent. And my buddy, the Lars, the first AD, he's just looking over there. He knows what I'm up to. He's like, gives me the nod. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Lars from LA, so I was like, "You want to bring something out there?" He's like, "Let me see." He just handed me a piece of paper with a list. I'm like, "Oh, well, he's got multiple things." What is this? Sunshine? I can't bring that shit back. I'll try to bottle some. Yeah, I was like, I got one carry You can on. borrow some from the Wraith. It had plenty of them. It had lots of sunshine. <laughs> it was so much Well, fun. I'm really glad we saw it with you. I'm glad you came out and we caught it. And I can't wait to go down the Universal Rabbit Hole for the next, uh, for October's I know. cycle. I want to see I, what I imagine they're just going to spoil the shit out of us. Yes. And, and um, you know, my next show, God, if, uh, if looking for Alaska... Would be in my last show for the year in, just say, we'll just round it mm-hmm. up to August. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, dude. I wouldn't have to work again till next August. That's phenomenal. Well, it's great. And we're really, so we'll have the whole month of October. There yeah. we go. We'll, we'll see if the has got some uh, yeah, and, and subscription that, tickets. And, and <laughs> I have friends that listen. They're like, oh, so he's free. <laughs> oh, I saw that you were available. <laughs> I mean, most of you are coming to LA and you get like 30 comments. of like, so what's it like to have friends? What's that, what's right. that you, feeling like? It feels pretty good. Yeah. And, and that's I have so many friends out here too, so that always helps. I feel bad because I miss saying it. Sarah and Dan this time, but they had guests, so mm-hmm. somebody else is going to be with them, and they're going to have an Good. incredible host too. But sometimes, man, it's like, um, so you fly down here for business or pleasure? I was like, my business is my pleasure, <laughs> and it's the truth because I can't. I love your guys' city so much, and they always tell me they're like, look, they just keep coming for one nighters, they just keep coming for your four day trips. And never lose that wonder of our city. Yeah. It will always be special. That's a good point. It is. It is like uh, never take off your tourist goggles. Yeah, that's a really like well, good they're way prescription, to... so they're going to stay on. That's a really good. Way and every to time do. you come out, people will always host you too, so you get like the yeah, host advantage. We're like, I- I'm only in for four days, but hey, if you're busy, no sweat. No sweat. They're like, well, he, and then, we, we got to catch him. He's only got four days. <laughs> he's only got four days. <laughs> well, this was also. I'm glad we got to record an episode live in person. Yeah, yeah. this right. was fantastic. First of many more. He'll First of many more. Soon. Oh, we're gonna have it. We got to plan something cool for October. Yeah. He's well, gonna, he's gonna be, be off in July. In July, I know. Oh, we got a lot. Of he's content. gonna be off for like eight years. Unless yeah. anyone listening calls him, and, and they're like, "So <laughs> you deliberately turned our shark movie down? Good luck getting an Oscar <laughs> this year." <laughs> All right, boys and girls. Well, this was fun. Stay scary. Watch, 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 watch a bunch of Universal movies. Watch, watch. It's a Universal picture. That's a wrap. Talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs>